Hey, welcome back to the Dusty Wheel. I'm your host, The Innkeeper, and this is our live call and talk show all about the Wheel of Time. Now, tonight our show is all about Madeline Madden and Egwene. But before we dive into her career and, and bring my guests on, I, I want us to learn just a little bit more about Madeline. A star was born in 2010 when Madeline Madden, an Australian actress at the age of 13, became the first Australian teenager to deliver an address to her nation. As an Aboriginal schoolgirl, she urged Australians to create job opportunities and a better future for the Indigenous people. Though this wasn't her first moment in front of the camera, nor would it be her last as an actress and activist. In fact, she caught the acting bug early in life. She remembers one such moment when she was eight, in which she convinced the director of a short film to include her, of which she says, I milked that five seconds I was on screen. Well, this was only one of many firsts for Madeline. She starred in Australia's first Indigenous teen drama, Ready for This. And a few years later, she was cast in her first American feature film in Dora and the Lost City of Gold, a role we will certainly cover tonight. And recently, she starred as a young revolutionary among a community of seductive half-human, half-siren in Tidelands, which is Australia's first Netflix original series. Of her role in Tidelands, she said, it's very female-driven, it's a matriarchal society, and that was quite liberating. Of course, this is not the only matriarchal society she'll be part of, because as we well know, she's been cast as Egwene in the first, the Wheel of Time television series, which from all the known news, is slated to premiere in 2021 on Amazon Prime. So with that introduction, let's discuss becoming Egwene. And to do that, let me welcome my two guests this evening, Lee Butler and Mary of Theoryland. How are you both doing? Hi. <laughs> I, I love it. I love how the guests are they're always kind of curious, like, how does this begin? How do we begin this? So <laughs> welcome both of you to the show. I, I thought what we would do first off, and Lee, I wanted to throw this question to you. Uh, I wanted to get to know Madeline a bit more outside of her roles, uh, outside of the Wheel of Time. Is there something that you've read or you've learned about Madeline that just kind of stands out to you? Um, I think the thing that, uh, you know, as a person that I know most about her is that she is an activist, that she's, you know, very into uh, Aboriginal rights and she's, you know, obviously very outspoken about it considering she, you know, addressed her nation at 13, which, wow. Yeah, you know, I, <laughs> right. <laughs> I was in a play at 13 in front of like maybe 30 people and almost died. So, you know, that's uh, that's pretty impressive, you know. So she definitely is, uh, you know, from, from all appearances, very self-assured, you know, person with opinions. And somehow that appeals to me. I don't know why. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know why that would appeal to you, Lee. Uh, if those of you that don't know, Lee is the Tor.com reread specialist. Now, beginning with the Wheel of Time, right? Yeah, uh, that is that is where your fame among Wheel of Time fandom began. Uh, and uh, I met I met Lee. I think we met at Jordan Con. I'm pretty sure that's where we met. Um, yeah. So it's awesome. It's awesome to have you here, by the way, because I know you made a post on Facebook and you're like, yes, I'm alive. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that everyone knows that you are alive and here with us. It's awesome to have you. That that what you just brought up, the fact that she's, you know, a political activist. I want to throw this quote up that she it's the first quote I think that really speaks to this. She said, when we were kids, we were never left out of these discussions about the world. We were always involved and asked what our opinions were. Madden notes of her politically charged upbringing. Having a kind of political voice and views from a very young age has been amazing and has really opened my mind. It has also been difficult when you're kind of finding yourself as a person and you want to get out in the world and start doing things and making a change. I, the really great explanation just from her own words about how that upbringing that she had actually instructed kind of this, you know, uh, what she became, the 13 year old that spoke to her nation about Aboriginal rights. Right. Uh, Mary, is there something else uh, beyond just being an opinionated, you know, politically active, you know, uh, voice out there? Is there something else about Madeline that stands out to you? I watched an interview that she did for, um, for an Australian uh, talk show about the show Tidelands and something that she said struck me about being selective about her roles and being excited that um, right now in Australia, there are a lot of uh, new opportunities for Australian actors and Australian stories to be told. And, and, and she's been part of the, uh, the, the cutting edge of that, doing uh, several uh, miniseries and short films uh, based in Australia, set in Australia from Australian stories. 
And uh, that just kind of stuck out to me as, as somebody who was, you know, selective of her roles. And she thought well enough of the Wheel of Time uh, to audition for it. So, and yeah. so yeah. it should be good. I'm hoping it's good. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Lee, what were you going to say? Um, me or? Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, I, Lee, I thought you were going to say something. Absolutely, yes. I mean, you know, like, if she's, if she's being picky about her roles, then we should be like, oh, wait, she picked us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, well, speaking to that, the second quote, I think, does speak to maybe that type of person that she became. This one, she said, everything that I have in my life and that I've been able to do is really because I've had incredibly strong family and community and ancestors that have gotten me here. So I feel eternally grateful for everything that I have because I know that people have sacrificed their lives so that I could get this opportunity. I think that kind of speaks to what you were saying is, you know, her upbringing, kind of all, all of that, that grounded feel that she cares about the roles that she's going to pick up. Um, one of the ones that I love, and it kind of speaks to what you just said, uh, Lee, like she picked us. And I, I want to throw this one up there because I think it does speak to us a little bit more. Um, this third quote uh, where she has, she says, I've always been a bit of a Star Wars nerd. So I would love to be a part of a Star Wars film, she admits. Stepping into that kind of world would be something that I would love to do, especially because Star Wars has such strong female protagonists in the franchise, and I would love to join their ranks in my lifetime. I, <laughs> there you go. Uh, she's definitely one of us uh, when it comes to being a nerd. Uh, uh, but this last quote, I would say, speaks to maybe, you know, she's not just a nerd. Uh, so this last one, she said, it doesn't matter what you're wearing when it comes to style. What matters is how you feel. I want to show off my bold side, my intimate side, my soft side, my fierce side. I want my style to reflect who I am. I have a lot of different interests, and I feel my eclectic style represents that. Uh, I, it, to me, it speaks like she doesn't really want to be pinned down to just one thing. Like, uh, and I guess maybe that's the overarching feel I have for Madeline as a person, is she's eclectic, yeah. right? Like, just whatever, uh, the roles she's playing, the style of clothing, whatever she feels like actually speaks about her and also the things that she's interested in, you know, from a political voice perspective, but that's not just her, right? I think a lot of people have kind of pigeonholed her to that. Like she's just an activist, but I don't think she thinks of it that way. So uh, I, I wanted to kind of uh, dig in there. Is there anything else before we jump into kind of the fact that she was cast for the Wheel of Time? Is there anything else that comes to either of your minds when you think about Madeline Madden that you want to bring up? I want to bring up that, you know, she's a young woman with an incredible amount of experience. She's been in the industry for over 10 years, and yet she's still in her early 20s. So she's got both the the young uh, experience, the young, uh, fresh eyes on these characters, but she also has a lot of uh, experience. She knows the ropes. She knows, she knows her craft. Uh, so I think that's going to be an excellent mix that she'll bring to such a... a, a central character as Egwene. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I would also say that, you know, the of the stuff that she's been in that I've actually looked at, all of them have at least an element of, of fantasy or, uh, you know, or, of the fantastic about them. Even, yes. uh, even Picnic at Hanging Rock, which wasn't like per se fantasy, but definitely was very much like sort of to evoke like a dreamlike state and, you know, mm -hmm things like that. So it was, it was shot in a way that you would, that you would shoot a fantasy film, even though it's not strictly speaking fantasy. So she clearly has an attraction to that, which I, I, my, historically, I feel like actors who are uh, into science fiction or speculative fiction themselves tend to do better than people who are like, I'm just here for a paycheck, you know, like, mm -hmm. I, don't, I, only read, I only read Danielle Steele. You know, but like, so I don't feel like that she's uh, going to come from it from that kind of perspective, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. No, I agree. I, I think that, yeah, there's something geeky about her, uh, which I think we can all appreciate and these roles that she's taken. And we're going to dig into that here in just a little bit. But I, I want to before we talk about kind of career highlights and, you know, talk about the roles that she has taken on. I want to talk about just your overall reactions to this, Lee. When you first saw Madeline Madden was announced as Egwene, what was your overall reaction to that casting? Um, well, it was interesting uh, because the, I saw it on Tor.com, and uh, there was, you know, people were getting all head up about it, and uh, you know, because that's what Wheel of Time fans do. And um, <laughs> I looked at the pictures, and I was, I was genuinely like, whoa! I mean, I would not have thought that, but the minute I saw her, 
I was like, oh, that's like super cool. I mean, they didn't pick like, you know, some generic, like anybody who like, you know, there's, there's a lot of shows that get cast these days. And it's like, I literally can't tell these people apart, you know, <laughs> and, and I mean, you know, and, and it's like, yes, you're all very pretty, but I couldn't pick you out of a lineup. And then, and so then, you know, the casting in general, I think was so very particular, like if that makes sense, yeah. that I was very impressed by it. And I think that it went, um, I think that it, it was braver than I had given them, originally given them credit for doing in a lot of ways. Yeah, like, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Uh, Mary, did you have a similar reaction to Lee's? Yeah, I didn't know who Madeline Madden was. I had to research. Um, I yeah, I had to see what <laughs> roles she had done. And I, there were shows that I hadn't seen. I had heard of the movie, the Dora movie. I hadn't seen it. Uh, but, you know, I didn't have an opinion, a strong opinion one way or the other. Um, I try not to typecast. Uh, even when we were doing fan casting, it was never really a a strong driver for me. It was just more of an idle amusement. So I didn't have my heart set on any particular person playing yeah. any particular role. Um, I just wanted whoever was cast. I wanted somebody who was going to do right by the character. Yeah. And this is a character that's so central to a lot of the story uh, that it's, it's a heavy burden and uh, it, I'm hoping it's in good hands. Yeah. Well, that was what I said. I mean, you know, like a, a five years ago, holy crap, I did my epic, you know, what casting post mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> yeah. on, uh, on tour.com. And I came up with a lot of names and, you know, of course it was ever, but then, you know, I said afterwards, this is all great and all, but honestly, what they need to do is they need to cast relative unknowns. You know, they need to cast some, you know, people who don't, aren't pigeonholed already who can grow into this role and and become I, identified with that role and i think that they they did that for all of them because i mean madeline madden is pretty well known in australia but but like in the united states she was pretty much unknown um so uh, so i think that they they did that very well for all of them and madeline included yeah mm -hmm. yeah for sure i there's something i like just the the variety of her roles and yeah, somebody that comes in with some acting chops, but is still you know, young and can fill this role itself. And I want to get into that particular piece of how we think they're going to you know, do together, right? Egwene and Madeline together, like becoming Egwene. But before we get there, I did want to jump into her career highlights. But part of this drive to do one of these type of shows goes back to what we were just all talking about, which is uh, some fans reacting to casting to me has just been... Um, just uh, boring. And that is to say, like, I'm tired of judging somebody simply because they don't look like something that I perceived. I'd right. much prefer to talk about the merits of their work and yeah. how they're going to do. I mean, no one blinked an eye or very few blinked an eye when Rosamund Pike stepped into the, the role of Moraine. Right. But I think that has to do with the fact that we a lot of us were familiar with her work and we could see from her work that we thought she could you know, do this, she could, she could fill those shoes. So, yeah, I, I think that uh, it's very clear that the, the, the showrunner, uh, you know, the, the, the crew and the, the writers for the show have made a very conscious decision that they were going to, you know, kind of go against type. Um, and I think that that's great. I think that that's it, it, it be even beyond, um, you know, politicized reasons. I, I think that, you know, Otherwise, you would have ended up with blandness. And, and I think that, you know, I think that w one of the things uh, I acknowledge is that my fan casting of Wheel of Time, in retrospect, was super boring. It was, you know, um, to be, you know, to be bald, it was lily white and, 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 and super boring. So, I mean, I think that they said, no, we're, we're not going to. We're going to go the other way. So... I think that that's great. And, you know, Rosamund, even Rosamund Pike is sort of against type for Moraine. I mean, she's tall and she's sure. long. <laughs> right, and, right. you know, Moraine was supposed to be short and brunette, but it's not about that. It's about, does this person have the ability to embody the character? Like, you know, you know, can they pull it off? Yeah. You know, it, it, everything else is window dressing. It's like, can they, can yeah. they, can they act the role? That's, that's the important part. 
Yeah, and that's and that's what I want to jump into. That's a perfect segue because she's played a lot of different roles actually, where she dealt with some rejection. You mm-hmm. know, I don't know if there's a, some irony here of you know this beyond the fact how fans feel about Egwene, some of them, right? And and how she's some fans, character. yeah, yeah, she's a divisive character, and how some some fans out there felt about this casting. Like this seems like par for course for Madeline. In other words, like uh, beyond roles and also. You know, you look at, like I said, her activism. So, but let's let's do that. Let's let's jump into when it comes to kind of her career and and look at it from a merit standpoint of why we think she's going to do a good job or where we might think she might struggle. So, and maybe that's a good place to start off. Uh, Mary, did you get a chance? I don't know if you saw her in Picnic at Hanging Rock, um, but yeah, the I'm just gonna that one I, I thought was an interesting one to begin with. Uh, was there something that stuck out to you when she played Marion Quaid uh, that you thought might uh, gives him insight into her abilities as an actress? Well, I only watched the first episode uh, so far. I've got to binge the rest, but I haven't had the time to. I actually want to read the book first and then binge it, but that's just me. Um, but from what I saw, her character was, you know, the one uh, character who was not Lily White. And it was they made a point of that her, she was of mixed ancestry at this finishing school. Uh, but she was also the one that was speaking intelligently and uh, was very daring um, as well, which are both very much Egwin qualities. Uh, that uh, So I definitely saw parallels there. Yeah. Interesting. I- daring. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Um, I, I hadn't actually come up with that particular. I like that. No, it makes sense. I've I've seen most of the episodes. I think the first episode actually is a lot of where she's at, and I think it does tell us a lot about that. Lee, you were going to say something. Oh, I just—I was going to say I, I saw all six of the episodes. I saw the whole thing, mm-hmm. and uh, nice. it's really good, by the way. Okay. <laughs> it, It's—it's it, pretty cool. Um, Mary, the character of Marion Quaid, um, they get a little more into her, you know, later on in the in the series, and she's got a little bit of onto herself. Daring is actually a pretty good descriptor of her. And also that she felt like she was an outcast or whatever. And that was sort of, you know, because there was the very Victorian racism that was going on, you know, and, you know, uh, at, at one point, you know, Natalie Dormer, who is playing the headmistress of the school, she sits down next to her and said, you're such an intelligent, lovely girl, you know, or some, something to this effect. And she said, it's just really a shame you're never going to get a marriage proposal, you know, and it's just like, <laughs> okay, wow, okay. So, yeah. but she's, she's very, um, you know, she's got kind of a screw you guys kind of uh, yeah. door to it because she, she hears that and she doesn't accept it. You know, she, she, she's, to a certain extent, all of the, all of the girls, the, the girls in Hanging Rock are rejecting the, incredibly oppressive environment that they're being forced to live in and she you know in a lot of ways had it worse than any of them so uh yeah. marion quaid did and uh and i think that she i mean obviously she that that was coming from a place that madeline was more than familiar with you know so yeah yeah and i think that's uh it's almost something i see in all of her roles which is there does seem like she almost picks those roles that we talked about where she feels like I can, I I understand this character, right? Mm -hmm. Or I can bring something to this character. Um, Even when we talk about her role here shortly in Dora, um, I think (laughs) that comes comes true. Those of you that happen to be watching us, it's your first time. Uh, If you can like this video over here on YouTube with us, really appreciate it. Other fans will find this live discussion about Egwene. And those of you that are actually watching us from Twitter and Facebook, we hope you've enjoyed this little sneak peek into our discussion on Egwene. If you want to know, all the rest of the details of what we, dis- what we discuss about these characters. And if we think that Madeline Madden will become Egwene, the one that, we're, that we've read about, jump over here on YouTube with us. Uh, enjoy the rest of the show over here on YouTube with us and jump into chat and you can kind of give us some comments here. And we'll open the call lines here in probably about, I want to say, 20, 25 minutes. This is a live call and talk show and looking forward to some of those calls. So, uh, yeah, that part of, and getting back to this conversation, that part about Marion Quaid, uh, to me, there was... Uh, and again, it just has to do with the role that they're playing in often. But she also did kind of, I don't know, keep to herself isn't the right word. But she did have, and almost uh, she was definitely owning something inside. And she did not trust everyone, right? And you could tell it probably because of how she was treated. Mm-hmm. And um, being able to kind of have that about her, I think, is going to come in key when it comes to Egwene. Um, you know, she has 
she's asserting herself and she has a way through what she what she sees as maybe people oppressing her and she kind of at least for me in that movie kind of uh yeah she she was an individual maybe that's what it is she seemed independent in that role which i liked to see uh her kind of act in so i don't know if that the independence showed up for either of you but that's the one characteristic that stuck out to me oh absolutely i mean you know all the all the roles that i saw her in was basically like you know her kind of saying i'm i'm not happy with the status quo and i'm i'm gonna let you know that i'm not happy with the status quo and i mean you know again sometimes i feel a little kinship with that so uh sure. so it was uh so yeah no she definitely she definitely there there was there was thought put into the roles that she that she picked i think yeah there was there were almost very well there's so many similarities in some cases that um uh, that it, I don't know if she's typecast. You know, I don't know if they're, I haven't seen all of her roles, but certainly for the Egwene, I think some of these things will actually play out really well. So maybe if we move on here then to Tidelands. Uh, did you get a chance to see any of those? I don't know if either of you saw Tidelands or, or dug into those. Yeah, Lee, go ahead. I, I watched the first like four episodes. So I didn't see the whole thing, but, uh, or the whole first season, but I did watch like the first four. And uh, again, she's, and we're kind of, you know, spoiling this. So. Oh yeah, so yeah, I should. Re- so, like, <laughs> I guess we'll throw off Taylor. Throw this up. This is a spoiler discussion. We're yeah. going to dig into Egwene here shortly. So just assume things that either happen in things that Madeline Madden has done, or the things that happen in the books. They're going to be spoiled. Okay, there's our spoiler warning. So for those of you, <laughs> go ahead. <Lee. laughs> so anyway, so you know, they, you know, there had this clandestine society of like, I think by the time it had been it had been revealed that they were like half-breed human siren offspring kind of thing. And they had this community, which um, her character, uh, Violka, which is a cool name, um, she she was rebelling against the authority of the queen of the, of the community. And she was like, oh, and- uh, Yeah, you're still good there. Yeah. Did we lose Matt? Okay. No, I'm, I'm still here, you're good. Okay, all right. <laughs> Um, so she was, you know, she basically, you see her engaging in plots to, you know, you know, maybe not topple her, but at least find out what's going on. So she was definitely being like, I I don't know about you, you know, and, (laughs) and being very sneaky about it and, and, and that kind of thing. So, um, which is interesting in light of, you know, her relationship with the Aes Sedai, you know, you know, the Egwene's thing so that was i definitely saw some uh parallels there yeah absolutely uh, uh did you have a chance to see any of this uh mary on tidelands i don't know if you, you got just on just that. clips but and i've read up on it and you know her character is 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 kind of an antagonist it may not be the the villain but it's definitely an antagonist she's like the mini antagonist she's right like, she's, <laughs> yeah she's like the antagonist to the antagonist mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. yeah so and, she's yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Playing the outsider or somebody who rejects the, yeah. the societal norm. Uh, yeah, that's going to yeah. come up. We're I like gonna... that. Yeah, outsider, daring, you know, uh, somebody who doesn't you know, obviously accept the status quo, an individual. Definitely. I, the one that stuck out to me, and I don't know if this is how everyone takes her acting. What I've watched, and especially in these two, it's like she has like an old spirit to her. Um, I don't necessarily get like this is a young teen. You know what I mean? I don't feel like she could play a young teen. I think she, there's, I don't know if it's just, uh, think about how she was raised. I think she just uh, does the age range, like in Tidelands. I think that's really, she does that really well. I think that's where uh, I think all of um, her experiences really come to bear and she really digs in there more. And that is to say like, uh, I don't think she should be playing like 14 year old roles, right? Uh, And so I kind of wonder if the Egwene role will be, you know, uh, somewhere actually a little bit older than Egwene is in the books. In fact, I wonder if all of them will be a little bit older than they are in the books, uh, because I, she's less. There's less of a, I don't know, young teen in me when I watch. And obviously, she's not a teenager, but uh, she pulls off a young, a young woman. Really, she does it really well, and she's really believable. So, yeah, well, that's like the eternal problem with casting teenagers, you know, or or, or playing teenage characters is that. You know they don't want to cast actual teenagers 
because mostly because of child labor laws, but um, and being a giant pain, but also because you had, I mean, especially if you're talking about like the Wheel of Time characters who go through this massive evolution, you know, to where they start off as like naive, fresh faced, you know, clueless, like backwoods people going, I don't know what they, this is. And then they, you know, eventually become, you know, world movers and shakers. That's a huge arc to traverse. And so when you're casting someone, you kind of have to you kind of have to look at that at that person and be like, okay, I need you to be able to play this young, naive, young thing, but I also need you to be able to play someone who I could believe could like dominate a room full of people like 200 years old. <laughs> right. You know? right. So, right, right. That's, so that's that, a big that, ask. It's a big ask. It is. So <laughs> like, you know, so that's something they definitely have to take in, into, uh, into consideration. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if that's going to come to play. I, I, that one, and it wouldn't surprise me. I look at all the actors. I don't know. They they don't strike me as you know a bunch of teenagers. Uh, they do strike me as a bunch of young adults. Uh, yeah. And and that would make a little bit more sense to a lot of their character arcs, honestly. Um, in my opinion, I know there's a lot of fans out there that you know, like no, they have to be their 16, 17, 18 year old selves. It, or it's not the wheel of time for me. But that's just not how I feel about it. But yeah, the, to that point, I don't know why. Again, it just might be my reaction to her acting. There's a, something I think she does well, which is, um, yeah, she just has this old soul and she's really, she does serious and she's very believable in, the, in that kind of, uh, that role yeah. itself. Um, now, uh, the one we haven't gotten to yet here, but we should, is Dora and the Lost City of Gold. Um, have you both of you- You made me watch Dora and the Lost City of Gold. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, uh, that'll that'll be the thing you take away from this, Lee. You'll be like, I don't remember much about the show. I just know that I watched <laughs> Dora. That's what it was. <laughs> so uh, maybe I'll jump Holy to you crap. first. Uh, first, Mary, on this uh, Dora. Did you see Dora? And you, uh, what were your thoughts about her her role in Dora? I, I dodged the bullet of watching all of Dora and, <laughs> and watched the highlight reel uh, for Madeline. Um, yeah, because uh, Boots was just yeah no for me but yes madeline uh her character in dora was sammy was the name it was a, an original character not from the cartoon uh, mm -hmm. i know the cartoon because my kids were in that age where they watched the cartoon <laughs> and sammy was kind of a uh a, a, you know she was trying to find herself and she was trying you know she took herself very seriously uh and took her role you know as, as being very serious and then you know in while well, she went from being in the school to being in the jungle and, and, and freaking out about that. And I just love the line that, oh, she brought a knife with her on the field trip. That's wonderful uh, yeah. kind of a thing. <laughs> and just, you know, the snark was, was great. I'm always a big fan of snark. Uh, but I didn't get the feeling that it was like snotty. It was just, uh, it was more of a, oh, uh, you know, this part of my, my role here is to freak out and that, uh, and, and I think she did that pretty well from what I saw. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Go so, for it. So what <laughs> I'm going to say, say about <laughs> Dora the Gold was, wow, that movie was, was ridiculous, but <laughs> um, I watched the whole thing. Okay. Well, so kudos to you. Film my pain. But however, with this, with the character of Sammy in particular, um, I actually really loved it because what she was, and this is like my personal thing, is she was an ooh ooh girl, which she was the girl who in school, you know, was like, <laughs> ooh, 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 I know the answer. And that to me has always been, you know, what Egwene really was. Like if she had been like transplanted into, you know, modern day America, that's absolutely who she would have been. This is my personal theory on Egwene. So yeah. like when the minute I saw that, I was like, oh my God, she's an ooh ooh girl, that's so cool. And, uh, and she was also, you know, kind of dealing with people, you know, hating on her because of that, you know, because she was like the know-it-all, um, you know, super perfect, had, everything had to be just so kind of character and everybody else was like, oh my God, she's the worst. And, um, <laughs> and then of course she wasn't the worst. So, you know, so it was, it, she would have benefited by having like, you know, a better script, but, um, that's not her fault. <laughs> sure. Yeah, so yeah. I, I know exactly who to blame for that. Um, but, uh, but, but her character in, to me was, you know, was, was pretty, was pretty great just because 
you know, she was she was that girl. She was, you know, the ooh, ooh girl. The ooh girl. What's yeah. interesting about it is uh, to me, the yeah, like you said, this was a kids movie. Mm -hmm. Right. And this is the first time I think that she talked about, well, doing a kid's movie and having kind of be like a bit of a comedic feel to it. And she I think she spoke about going she went over the top a bit on purpose, you know, like for the first kind of kid's movie role. And then she has to kind of be like the serious person in a kid's movie, you know, which is always difficult, (laughs) you know, like and she has to be the one that like is supposed to be the serious adult kind of reaction, you know, as compared to Dora and everybody else. So in that regard, like you said, but they, she still picked a role where, you know, she wasn't adored by everyone, right? Um, people didn't understand her and treated her poorly because of you know, the misunderstandings. And she, and she struggled with like building those kind of solid friendships until she could kind of basically trust that people weren't maybe making fun of her. Or, but at the same time, she asserted herself and she was going to be herself no matter right. what. And I, yeah. There's there's one uh, one thing that I, I wonder about that role, and it's hard to judge because it's a kids movie. Um, I think she does a fantastic job when it's it's Madeline, right? Like her genuine delivery uh, of her of her lines, her her acting, I think comes across much more believable when it's really kind of genuine to her to her to her character. And and again, it's a kids movie, so how do you judge that? Like you said, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, but. The focus was definitely not on realism. Yes, exactly. Uh, so not in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> so that's definitely something you have to take into consideration. Yeah, she and and she had fun with it. You could tell, like, this was her first American feature film. It's a kids' movie. You know, she jumped yeah. into it with both feet. So that, that part was. And for those of you that are watching in chat, I'm kind of curious if you did see uh, Dora and like how somebody wrote. I think it was Rajesh in, in chat wrote. Dora and the Lost Eye of the World. Yes, if you did see Dora and the Lost Eye of the World or whatever, Golden City, whatever it was, um, thumbs up if you enjoyed her uh, in that. Um, and no thumbs down. So just a thumbs up, but we don't have to be negative about it. It's a kid's movie. <laughs> so uh, other than those roles, uh, I mean, before we jump into and we switch the gears a bit and talk about Egwene, is there anything else that you saw her act in or anything else about her acting that you want to bring up before we, yeah, before we jump to Egwene? Uh, Nothing in particular? I I mean, those are the three things I've seen her in. So uh, if she, the other stuff, uh, I don't, I don't, I couldn't render an opinion, but, uh, but I mean, I liked all, all of the things that I saw her in. I mean, I think that um, she was hampered uh, in, in a couple of cases by, you know, being the, the minor role, which, yeah, you know, we'll talk. We'll talk about that when it comes to, you know, the, the two together. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, like you know, like Dora was very much. They were focused on one thing. But I, I will point out that even for a kids movie, it was focused on people of color, and sure. uh, yeah. which is sort of unusual in children's American children's movies. And. I'm not, I would not be surprised to find that that was a factor in her choosing the, the role, sure. you know, so there's that. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting point to bring up. Yeah. Um, well, uh, that is, yeah, thank you very much for kind of uh, watching through Dora, Lee. I appreciate that. And, and you know, basically. Uh, so, many, take... so many monkey CGI. <laughs> <laughs> you loved it, right? Uh, <laughs> we did, I did, I, did, I watched them with my family. And they're like, why are we watching this again? Uh, it's like, a little baby Trolloc. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yeah. So uh, now let's jump to Egwene. And this is where chat might get divisive. <laughs> because Egwene among fandom tends to be divisive. I, I don't want to spend a lot of time there. It isn't to, uh, this isn't to litigate all of the things Egwene did in the books that you didn't like as a fan. This is to talk about Egwene's personality who she is, and from a character arc perspective, what do we think are the highlights and the important pieces to this? And with me are two individuals I know really like Egwene. So uh, I really want to hear both of your opinions on this. And maybe we'll start with you, Lee, and jump down to Mary. When it comes to Egwene, what is the essential Egwene here? You know, what what is her personality, and what are the parts of her that Amazon and Rafe have to get right? Um, for me, Egwene, okay, like, you know, cause I sort of have a particular perspective on her, which I, which I admit is probably a little bit biased because I identify with her. 
which is that as soon as I, you know, again, and coming back to the whole ooh, ooh girl thing, as soon as I realized, you know, I was that girl, you know, I was the one who was always like, I know the answer, I know the answer. And everybody was like, oh, God, it's me again, God. And so I had a lot of sympathy for that, <laughs> which sure. other people really don't have a lot of sympathy for. But I, I love that about her. And I love that for Gwen, she was, she was incredibly self, she's, you know, even from the very beginning to start, you know, when she's naive and doesn't know Jack about anything, she's very self-possessed. She knows, you know, as soon as she realizes that she has the ability to channel, she's like, yeah, I'm going to be a nice day. Bye. Like, like she just like takes off into the sunset, does not look back, like goes for it full, full, bore, full bore, you know, like just has nothing, you know, doesn't let anybody stand in her way, which in a female character is, uh, is that's something that's always admired in a male character and which can be very <laughs> troublesome in a female character. And so what I admired in her was that she was, she was basically like, nope, this is what I want. I'm going for it. Screw you guys. And then, you know, and then that was it. She just charged straight ahead. And a lot of people really didn't like that. And I said, yeah, I kind of think that might say, you know, more about other people than it does about <laughs> Egwene. So that was my view on it. I recognize that there are like other ways to look at it. And I think that, that obviously like where you come from in your own personal experience has a big influence on that. But for me, I was always like, you go girl. I mean, like, I, I wish that I had had like 10, you know, one tenth of the amount of drive that you had, you know? Yeah, her, and, uh, Egwene's assertiveness and her confidence, whether or not it's a little bit of false confidence at the beginning, like we all have in our teenage years or, She's you totally know. totally doing the fake it till you make it thing. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And it's like, you know, and I'm saying like, yes, some of that was completely undeserved, but it'd be like, okay, you're in the middle of like the ale waste and you're surrounded by like crazy people who are like, you know, beating you up because of water or whatever. <laughs> and, like, you know, what are you gonna do? You know, either you can just kind of bald face your way out of it or, you know, you can crumple and, and yep. you, know, you have to give her props that she didn't crumple. Yeah, she's definitely driven. And I think that that's what comes out in the first couple of books is you know, maybe somebody you didn't, you know, you're maybe you're focused on Rand, Matt and Perrin. You don't recognize this, but very driven individual, uh, very assertive and still very young in the books. Mm -hmm. So I think that is all to be taken into account. Uh, Mary, is that, what else stands out to you other than she's assertive and driven? Uh, you know, what else is essential Egwene when it comes to casting? Uh, her excitement. She was one of the, she was the only one that was happy to go on this adventure <laughs> and she went out to experience the world and she, you know, yeah, channeling was taboo, but she found out she could channel. And I was like, yes, this is awesome. Uh, I want to learn this. I want to know as much as I can about it and I want to be the best at it. Um, it goes back to the her the chapter when she was a child and hauling water from the river she was going to be the best water hauler not to please the adults but because she wanted to show that she had the skills she could do it she could be dependable she uh you know she was the ooh, -ooh girl i love that i'm gonna have to use <laughs> uh, you know when they weren't went to the different cities she, you know, she was you know she would try out their culture she would try out their dress she would do her hair differently she would dance with the tinkers she would learn she she always wanted to learn and she wanted to know and she wanted to be there and where everybody else was like oh my god i've got you know horrible things are happening and we're being chased and blah 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 and she's like yes let's go you know she's definitely ride and die and i and i love that and so i think that's what i'm hoping that malo will bring to the role is this uh this joy to rave this uh, excitement even though they yes they are running for their lives and yes they are seeking the dragon reborn and the dragon reborn is going to save the world and destroy it at the same time but that doesn't mean you can't have fun while you're doing it <laughs> <laughs> well no, i love this and i love that jordan writes these characters so differently right she's not the type of person to look back Right. She's not the like, you know, as much as the boys were like, let's go home. She's like, well, you're ridiculous. You're like, like this. Field? I don't know her. <laughs> exactly. And it wasn't and it wasn't because she hated Edmonds Field or she didn't have a good life there. You know, that wasn't it. It was like, you know, I had a great life. Let's go have more great life. You know, right. let's expand our horizons. You don't have to be constantly running from a horrible thing that came later for Egwene. <laughs> 
Sure. In well, space. yeah. I, mean, I think that's an important piece, which is she's very curious, very excited about the future. She's that personality. You have friends like this. They just don't look back, right? You might be like, hey, you remember like three years ago, you were a jerk to me, and they're like, I don't remember. But <laughs> but whatever, like, are we going to go bowling or what? You know, like, um, you know, they're just, she's not that type of person to sit back and just contemplate all the things. She doesn't have that in her. And that's, I think they need to get that right. right? I, there are characters like that, but I think they need to get that piece right about Egwene. Yeah. Sorry, you were going to say something. I was just going to say, yeah, and that's the thing that some people find incredibly irritating. Like, sure. you know, somebody who really is that focused and forward forward focus and thinking, you know, ahead and like, I don't, you know, the past is the past or whatever. Some people, like, that really bugs them. And, you know, you can even, you can see that. I mean, like some people, uh, you know, it's like, okay, you know, you're, 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 you're not, be, you're not playing me right here, but. <laughs> right, right you know, what are you going to do? So she's, uh, she's got a focus and a drive that I think that a lot of people both envy and are irritated by. Yeah, so, like, I, I don't know like why. It's like, how dare she be yeah, so, right. like, you know, why, have these great qualities. How dare she? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, I want to bring this into play also, right? So this isn't just about a character that leaves town and they, she's actually very gifted. Mm -hmm. She's she's very strong in the one power. Imagine, right? Just, I mean, all of us like to think like, no, no, this wouldn't affect us. But somebody comes up to you and just says, hey, you're actually the best at something out there. And you didn't know. And we're going to just show you. And right. they, and she is. You know, that taking on that kind of responsibility of power and capability and talent at a young age is also a struggle, right? It's not just <laughs> roses and everyone wants it to be, right? Uh, we all do this and I do this. I started reading the books when I was 14 or something. Uh, I liked certain characters because they were like me and the ones that weren't, I didn't like as much. And as I become an adult, the ones that aren't like me are kind of more annoying and the ones that are, I like more, right? We all want sometimes Egwene to be older and more capable and more caring and more thoughtful and more introspective and all these other things because we had a friend like her one time and they hurt our feelings or something. Like in the end, Jordan does a fantastic job with that idea. Mm -hmm. But but it, no one really talks about the fact that the Sean Chan event does affect her. And so yeah. to me, Egwene is also dealing with, you know, I don't know if you call that PTSD or what do you want to call it, um, but she's dealing with a significant uh, emotional injury here and yeah. and also her she's affected by fame and people don't want to kind of buy into this because it feels like an excuse for a characterization you know it feels like an excuse for things that she does but it's part of her character and to me that's what Rafe also has to get right about Madeline Madden when she goes through these things we need to see these we need to see her change. She can't just be the same person, and, and she isn't the same person. Um, yeah. So what, what do you hope? I mean, as far as Egwene down the road, does she remain all these things, Lee, to you? Or do you see added things show up that they need to get right? Oh, well, you know, you can't go through the things that she went through, that any of the characters go through, and not, change, and not have it change you. But I think um, the thing about Egwene, I mean, like, the, OK, the, the, the whole Shanshan thing, uh, basically, that was like one of the first times in my life I had to be like, I have to walk away from this book now because I'm going to kill someone. You know, <laughs> I was so angry about what was happening to her, and it was just so freaking unjust. And honestly, like the fact that she wasn't more traumatized by that event is actually pretty impressive. But as she got older, I think that, um, and as she matured and things happened to her, I think that the I think that the impressive thing about Egwene is that she she tempered her drive and her zeal and you know and she and she became wily about it you know she learned how to politics she learned how to you know be an Aes Sedai basically and um you know be a little more subtle about what yeah. she did she didn't let any of that actually like alter her goals you know she she was like okay well I can't just like you know, come in here and say, I am, you know, I am the captain now, you know, she can't, she couldn't do that. <laughs> right, right. But she figured out how to, you know, do it in a, in a, in a sneaky way. Yeah. And again, some people didn't like that, you know, and, uh, but I think that like, she, even with everything that happened to her, she, she never lost sight of where she was going. You know, she always kind of did the thing, you know, 
and that's I mean that's really impressive when when you compare it to like real life and you're like wait what was I doing and yeah so yeah. I, one of the things I think she does to do the you know the weaving through all that I think she internalizes a lot of those things and I think yeah. they come out and that's what people aren't giving credit for is these things do come out randomly and they mm -hmm. come out in ways that bother people uh, so much because it's like no she should be she should be perfect and unaffected and able to handle all things. Um, so I like that there's something real about how Jordan has written her and she is affected. She's not perfect. And she does some things that people should not like necessarily, but we all do. So I don't know, Mary, how do you feel about this? Uh, as far as things that come on later for Egwene, you know, either talents or skills or attributes that she builds later in the show, where does Rafe and his team need to take Egwene that hopefully Madeline can match, I guess. I think, if you had to boil it down is a Gwen is a, you know, is constantly in a fight or flight situation and she always chooses fight. You know, she's ready to throw down no mm. matter what situation she will roll up her sleeves and she will tackle uh, whatever obstacle happens to be in front of her. And uh, whether that obstacle be, you know, the world of dreams or the, the rules of the Aiel or, you know, the forsaken or anything, or, you know, the, the, the hall of the tower, uh, she she had the guts to call Elida out on her crap to her face. Uh, she managed to manipulate the uh, the Saladar Tower uh, to do what she wanted to do. This this little slip of a 17 or an 18 year old girl uh, ran circles around these centuries old Aes Sedai and uh, owned them. And that was such a great scene in the Path of Daggers. That's why it's one of my favorite books. And I think that. Um, that's where I think Madeline will shine is in that taking, you know, building from that, uh, those life experiences that Egwene has on this journey and all of the trauma that she went through and still came out of it wanting to help people and wanting to, uh, to better herself and not losing that, that joy of learning, um, even with everything that she uh, had to do and everything that she experienced. And I think that's where uh, Rafe and Madeline will, will make the character shine. Yeah, and I, and I hope that they avoid the tendency to want to somehow make her more perfect. And that is to say, right. I want to see these, I want to see these character flaws. I want to see the effects of Pat and Fane on her. I want to see the effects of the Sean Chan. When, like you brought up, uh, she fights through things. I think, she, yeah, I think that's exacerbated, right? I think yes. her tendency to want to fight and get through it does get her through a lot of things that maybe would have been more difficult, but I don't think that, that that definitely grew from those experiences. And so I, I guess I'm hoping to see Madeline not already be there, if that makes sense, at the beginning of the show. I, I right. want to see some arc. And there are, some, there are elements of trust in all of the characters. And who do you trust and who can you trust? And, I th and depending on how much they lean on that, uh, that's definitely a part of Egwene's story. Because she has huge trust issues because yeah. of the experiences that she had. Uh, but she's also, you know, she she is a very, uh, and I love her for it, but I've seen, you know, she's a mouthy character. You know, she has absolutely no problem speaking her mind in, in the bluntest of all possible terms. And, uh, it, you know, the only one that's even more blunt than her is one of my favorite characters in the story, and that's Nynaeve. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I'm curious to see how it all plays out because like you said Matt I don't want them to make Egwene to be this perfect character she's you know she's got a lot of depth to her she makes a lot of mistakes and she does stumble on her journey and it's those stumblings that really show the growth of her character and you know we need to see her falter when she's in tear we need to see her own up to her mistakes when she's in the waste and confronting the Aiel we got to see that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, yeah, Lee, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, the, the that was part of a, also I think which a lot of people didn't like about her was that she, her increase uh, as the series goes on, her increasing distrust of Rand, and you know her wariness of him. You know, which is kind of boring with that they grew up together and almost were like you know a couple kind of thing, and but you know, and the thing is is that like you know if if you look at it from her point of view, it's like okay kid is getting crazier and crazier. I mean, you know, like, yeah, he's not, he's not operating on all four cylinders. So, you know, she's probably not wrong to be a little wary, you know, but 
at the same time you want her like i remember i got irritated with her on several he's like just trust him like it's fine he's crazy but he's you know fine and uh <laughs> and, and 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 you know so a lot of times it's 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 easy to kind of attribute that as a character flaw when really it's just you know common sense kind of thing sure, sure yeah sure. but it tr of course you you're absolutely right uh married trust is like a huge thing entirely that's like one of the major overarching themes of of the entire series you know yeah. let alone Eglin character. <laughs> let alone, yeah. yeah like everybody is like who do i trust I don't know. yeah exactly so uh I think this is a good place for us to take just a moment. Remind everybody, this is a live call-in talk show. We will probably spend the last 30 minutes taking your call while we talk about Madeline becoming Egwene now. Now that we've kind of talked a little bit about her career, talked about Egwene, I want to talk about where we think some of the strengths will be for Madeline coming into this role and where maybe some, uh, it'll stretch her a bit, if you will. You know, where are some, do we have any concerns from uh, fans of the material that, she might have to grow in certain ways to really, you know, become Egwene. So for those of you that are curious, you can give us a call at one three one three talk watt We probably won't be able to get a ton of calls. It's probably going to be three or four of you in here. But yeah, please give us a call one three one three eight two five five nine six eight. We'll bring you in if you have a comment about Egwene. I would ask, please be respectful if you're going to call <laughs> to our guests and Madeline Madden and Egwene, if you will. Uh, we don't need any tirades about how much you dislike any of it or all of it. So, uh, but yeah, please do give us a call. And before I bring somebody in, I want to bring this last topic to bear. Madeline as Egwene. And Mary, maybe we start with you here. Let me, let's start from a strength perspective. What did you see in, and how, do you, how did you kind of carry it into Egwene as far as what you think she's going to excel at from an acting and an embodiment role here when it comes to Egwene? Well, a lot of the roles that Madeline played, uh, from what I saw, are kind of coming of age and finding yourself and being true to yourself, which definitely applies to Eglin. Um, what you mentioned earlier is, you know, will she be able to play that bright-eyed, bushy-tailed naivete well and then balance that with the, the reality of what uh, Eglin's story arc will be? Uh, I think that will be... Uh, I don't know if that'll be a stretch for her, but I think that's where uh, she'll have to put in the most work. And you know, the characters that she's played that I've that I've seen have have done that to greater and lesser extents, depending on the scripts and the the roles that she's played. So um, I, I think she's got the chops for it. Yeah, and, and Lee, where do you think that, from a strength perspective, that you, she comes in and she's going to nail this role? I mean, she she's definitely got like the 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 presence of mind there. Like she's definitely like in a cerebral place with these roles. She's not just you know mouthing her lines or whatever. She's thinking about what she's doing, which is immensely helpful. Um, I do have a little bit of concern because most of the roles that she's played now have been strictly supporting roles. Yeah. And while technically Egwene is a supporting role, like in the in the sense that Rand is like the main character the way that the books go and the way i kind of uh picture the wheel of time series go is these are all actually like their own protagonists following their own you know particular storylines that sometimes kind of merge and sometimes kind of don't and then they go off on their own thing so she's got to be able to carry the story um you know i don't i i haven't seen any evidence that she can't but we also haven't really seen any evidence that she that she can because she hasn't yeah. been, she hasn't been given a chance to do it yet. So that is sort of a little bit of a wild card, I think, with her. And I think it's uh, honestly like a, a wild card with a lot of these unknowns. Yeah. <laughs> certainly not alone there. And uh, so she's you know it is it's a heavy burden that they're all picking up in terms of you know what they what they have to portray. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, how much she and the other uh, super, super, super kids, um, <laughs> how much, how, how well they bear up under that burden. So uh, yeah, that, that's something I'm really interested to see. But I think she's got the core of it there. You know, she, you know, she understands what it's like to be an outsider. She understands uh, what it's like to to be like kind of the outcast a little bit, uh, or to be you know um mocked or reviled for speaking her mind um yep. you know and and i think if she takes that from her own life and from her previous roles and puts that into a brain i think she's going to do a really good job 
yeah I, I love all that um that yeah the the reviled uh for opinions that she holds you know um standing up for her opinions uh no matter what the pressures are around her mm-hmm. and that's immensely i think that happens a lot of times just for any young person in this world <laughs> if you will um when they are confronted with with fame in this regard yeah. right uh, and they want to get out there and they want to speak their minds about things and that can be a really difficult challenge and i think she's stayed consistent with that speak this goes back to that quote that i had just about that strong family connection that she has so mm-hmm. yeah I, I i think that is where she's definitely going to own this particular role and before i kind of get to maybe an idea that i had about where i think a challenge might be out let's bring in some of our callers here our first caller is andrew hey andrew welcome to the Dusty wheel man how you doing pretty good you tell Way. I just want to say thank you for the all the um, the tour rereads and, and the great movie watch. I'm just disappointed that that fell by the wayside. <laughs> thank you very much for uh, for that. Uh, what was your question for us? The question was: I want to know what you guys think and how how Madeline will play uh, her when she's the Adame, the Adame, and when she's captured in in, in Sancha. And how do you think? that she'll come across on that in those scenes. Ooh, that's a because good question. You have yeah. to, as an actress, that has to be a powerful, you know, she has to get the powerful emotions to be scared. And then basically to the point where she's almost giving it up. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good point. I, my opinion is we're not going to see that until season two, but that's a good question. Well, I Lee, agree, what, but what are your thoughts here, Lee, as far as uh, really embodying just that one part of the role in, in you know, in the Sean Chan's grasps? I think that, um, themes of slavery, uh, uh, the the Aboriginal experience in Australia was uh, maybe not exactly analogous to that of African Americans um, with slavery and that kind of thing, but they were definitely very, very oppressed. Um, and, and, and I think that she's going to tap into a lot of that. Um, and I think that it's going to be difficult I would, I would, I think it would be difficult for anyone, but, but in particular, for someone whose ancestors had to deal with some of the things that 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 her ancestors had to deal with, um, I think it's going to be very affecting. And I think that if she kind of harnesses that and 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 uses it to her, you know, to 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 effect, that can be an incredibly powerful thing. I mean, it was an incredibly powerful thing in the in the book. Um, so I'm, I'm imagining seeing it played out on screen. If they do it right, it's going to be like, ama- it's going to be terrible, but amazing kind of thing. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I think that seems like something, like you said, maybe that will be something she does tap into from an emotional experience standpoint. Uh, but it, yeah. yeah, I think either way, it'll be really difficult. Uh, Mary, anything to add to that particular thing uh, when it comes to Madeline, uh, you know, taking on those scenes? I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, one of the, the, the things that struck me about it was uh, Gwen never hated herself, never thought, oh, I wish I never could channel. Uh, she never kind of turned in on herself, even while they were trying to break her to to become a Damani. And mm. uh, I'm hoping that that will shine through that, you know, even while all of this is going on, that we still see the core of Egwene still fighting uh, as best she can to, to against what she's up against and uh you know we could start to slow see her slowly slipping away but she's fighting every step of the way and i hope we see that yeah yeah no that's great hey andrew thank you so much for calling in man as always yep. awesome to hear your voice great question and have a good yep, evening thanks okay? have a good night you. you too Bye-bye. all right bye yeah let's uh bring in our next caller liz to the show hey liz welcome to the dusty wheel how are you doing tonight Hi, I'm doing great. I'm really super, super excited that you're having this conversation because uh, I love Egwene. <laughs> and so uh, what, are your, what were your comments? I mean, either having to do with Madeline or Egwene or Madeline becoming Egwene. So I think the most interesting thing uh, to me about Egwene is her ability to have such a strong sense of herself and also be able to absorb all of these other cultures and kind of live among mm. other people and take in pieces of their culture and really like absorb them in a, in a way that other characters don't. And I guess my question would be just how challenging that would be as an actress to play this character that uh, 
has such a strong personality and, and is very solidly grounded in her personality and who she is, yet also has this openness to other cultures. Um, yeah. I just kind of wonder how easy it would be to do that. Yeah, that's a fantastic just, point. We haven't really brought this up, which is, yeah, the way that um, that she will maybe be able to kind of uh, uh, own that uh, from an acting standpoint, uh, is that what you, Liz? Do you think that Madeline will kind of completely be able to embody that aspect of Egwene, and that they're very similar in that regard? I think she will, but it, it's a really tricky thing because in the books we get to kind of see these different perspectives, um, and just as far as translating that to TV, uh, I imagine it would be incredibly challenging. I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts on that. Yeah, Mary, any thoughts on uh, on this? Yeah, this, this. I think it'll be tricky to uh, to show it in a way that's genuine, uh, like you mentioned, Liz. That, that you know, she knows who she is. She's got that uh, great sense of self identity, and she's experiencing all these cultures by, like I said, you know, wearing the dresses and dancing the dances and trying the food and and listening and to do so in a way that is not condescending or is not uh, sub she's not trying to sublimate herself into it. She's just trying to experience it. And how, how do you do that genuinely? I'm curious to see how that happens. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be interesting when I, I these are all the things that I hadn't thought about before. Uh, Egwene's going to be a really challenging role. Not that all of the, I think all five coming out of Ben's field are very challenging because there's growth arcs here. Um, Liz, before we let you go, are there any concerns, any things that you, um, other than that kind of challenge itself, or is there anything that you think that Egwene or that Madeline will be very strong uh, and, and bring to the role that will just embody Egwene really well? I think the more I learn about Madeline uh, as a person and as an actress, I'm super excited just to see what she does with this character. I, I have no like misgivings whatsoever. I, <laughs> I just can't wait to see how it all unfolds. Um, and I think the showrunners and, and everyone so far, the little bits I've seen of it, um, are going to just knock it out of the park and be amazing. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I, from what they've said, you know, and I know that that's part of their job is to <laughs> be excited about the people that they choose. But certainly uh, from what they've talked about, uh, everyone's really excited about Madeline Madden embodying Egwene. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it also. Hey, Liz, thank you very much for calling us. Really appreciate that. And have a good evening, okay? Thank you. Yep, you bye-bye. too. Bye. Yeah, I love I love hearing fans fans opinion that they bring a lot to the table. Just it's really difficult to just paint the entire picture of Egwene in one sitting here. So I love that they brought in a couple of pieces that I hadn't even considered. Uh, let's bring our next caller to the call here. Uh, a well known among the dusty wheel, Norm. Welcome to the show tonight. How you doing? Norm. <laughs> Good innkeeper. Raise my glass to you, sir. Mary, fist bump. Uh. And Lee, I just have to tell you face to face, even though you can't see me, I loved your blog of Wheel of Time. Those Thursdays were something I looked forward to on your rereads. It was fracking awesome. So, you know, I just have to give a massive shout out to you, young lady. Uh, okay. Here's, here's my, here's my question. Um, one, what does Madeline have to do right in your eyes in order for you to, you know, that she has to nail? Or what does she, if she does something wrong, what is that one thing she has to do wrong to make you just, like, cringe as she's mm-hmm. playing this? And then two, ladies, what was your favorite Egwene moment so that, Lee, I can see your rainbow sparkle yay? <laughs> and for and for you too, Mary. I want to hear yours as well. So, what were your favorite Egwene moments that you can't wait to see Madeline play? Yeah, so maybe we'll start. Let's start uh, with question one, and and Lee, we can go to the, with, with this one, which is: is there just is there a moment that she has to knock out, like, get right, or is there something that she could get wrong, and it would just kind of sour your experience? I guess. Um. Well, I mean, obviously, there's a there's a bunch of moments she has to get right. I mean. Most of them are honestly sort of later on in the series. Uh, like, basically, the the war vote is a, a huge one that has mm-hmm. to be done correctly. Um, and also, um, you know, when she's captive in the tower and kind of doing her subort subversion camp, you know, sapping campaign from within, that is a huge part of it. And then, of course, you know, the absolute end. Um, 
but like I'm, I'm trying to think if there's like a moment early on uh, that is sort of an iconic Egwene moment. And, and honestly, it probably comes back to the whole, uh, the Shanshan, her captivity. That's yeah. really her first big thing. And uh, like I said, I do think, I think she's going to nail that, but she really has to nail that. So yeah, yeah. I agree with that. so yeah. I like that, Mary, is there one where you think early on she just has to get this right? Uh, Madeline just has to get this right or he just won't be believable as Egwene? I, I hope she captures Egwene's, like I said, her 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 innate curiosity, her joy, her, her joy of being there, but also the sass, the snark um, that, you know, she is her own person and she's quite opinionated and uh, doesn't back down from any challenge, even amongst her friends. You know, she's got good camaraderie with all of the uh, uh, her compatriots in Emmons Field, even, you know, even Nynaeve, who she's, you know, in a, she's growing out of that student teacher role into her own person. You know, she's friends with Rand. She's friends with Matt. She's friends with Perrin. She learns she is friends with Rand. It's not what they originally thought. So I'm. It, it, there's a lot going on right there that she ha that Madeline will have to juggle and and get right. Uh, one thing that she could do, and I, I don't, I wouldn't, I don't know if it would be a Madeline thing or if it would be a, a plot thing, is if they just focus too much on her vacillating. Do I like Gowan? Do I like Gallad? Do I like you know? If they <laughs> focus in too much on the relationship between. Egwene and Gallad and Egwene and Gowan. It, I hated reading it in the books. I really don't want to see too much of it on the screen. It's it's just distracting. I don't want to see it. I like it. No, I, I, I don't want to that. see. I don't want to see Gowan at all. I think they should cut him out of the series entirely. And... I think they should combine <laughs> the two characters. Whoa, whoa, whoa! This is not a Gowan. This is not a Gowan uh, yeah. discussion. Sorry, I just hate him so much. That's that'll come up later once they announce the actor for. Yeah, well, Gowan. we, we can we'll, we'll revisit that, Lay. We've got some great opinions on that. Yeah, I won't so, have I won't have tea in my cup when we're talking. I will about have that. I will have a desk to slam my head into. Ready to go. <laughs> So I know we, we have two other callers waiting, so I want you to answer this one. Really just give a, your 30-second summary. Uh, favorite Egwene moment? Uh, do you have it in mind, Mary? What's your favorite Egwene moment for the entire series? Yeah, go The for entire it. chapter, Honey and the Tea. Okay, yeah, sure. Of course. <laughs> and how about you, Lee? I mean, it has, to be, it has to be either the war vote or the obvious at the end. You know, okay. um, yeah. like, I mean, the war vote was, you know, that was, it was so amazing. It was great. It was like the perfect, it, it, it just all, all the dominoes fell and it was fantastic. And she set it up and she pulled it off and it was like Ocean's Eleven kind of, it all came together and they robbed the casino. And that was, you know, that was, to me, that was, you know, one of the best parts of her. But I mean, there were many, but that yeah, was definitely... That was yeah. That was up there. Yeah. Right up there. Well, Lancer, as always, fantastic entry into the call and <laughs> wonderful questions. And I guess we'll see you uh, at another night here at the Dusty Wheel. Good night, man. Yeah. Have a good night, everybody. You too. Bye bye. Yeah, that's, it's hard to pick one moment for her. Uh, I like the transformation moments uh, for Egwene. Like when she actually gets the, the ring and uh you know digs into the dream world that aspect i just i love about her arc uh again i'm i'm kind of a i love teleron riad so of course but i love uh Egwene in teleron riad and uh, and everything that rob Jordan develops there so we have two other callers we're gonna bring these callers in then we will tie up where we think the strengths and challenges might be for madeline and we'll uh we'll say good night here so let's bring in our next caller it's a uh, Chad to the show. Hey, Chad, welcome to the Dusty Wheel. How are you doing tonight? Hey, thank you. Um, uh, rose colored shades in the chat. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> nice. um, first time being able to call in. Um, I just want to say I appreciate all you guys. And I love the Dusty Wheel. I have four kids. I don't usually have time to listen to any of this kind of stuff. Uh, but I try to make time for the Dusty Wheel because it's just really fun listening to everyone talk. And you guys the production block episode you guys did recently was amazing. So I wanted to say that Thank first. You. Yeah. Um, sure. When it, when it uh, comes to Madeline Madden, um, from what I've seen in her work, um, from like the picnic at Haining Rock, uh, and the I can always mix up the Siren Show or the the Mermaid Show that she's in on Netflix. Yeah. I don't know Thailand. which one it is. Thailand. Yeah. Thailand. Thailand. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, from what I've seen from those two things, uh, I really think she's going to capture kind of like the vivacity of Egwene and um, the tenacity, uh, the spirit of the character. So I, I'm really excited. And, and she's such a young actress, but I feel like she is one of the most experienced, especially in terms of her age, in terms of the Emmons Field 5. Um, so I think we're going to be really impressed with her personally, and I think she's a great fit for the character. Um, I guess my question would be, uh, I, I you, and I missed the beginning, so I apologize. I don't know. You guys may have touched on this. Like, what specific trait, like, what one specific trait of uh, Egwene do you guys think Madeline will best embody? And if you guys have kind of already touched on that, then my backup question would be, uh, in terms of her relationship with Rand, um, because a lot of that is going to be determined by the directors and the writers and Rafe, of course. But as the actress, she can bring some nuance to how she performs it. Would you like to see her be a little bit more supportive of Rand as he, you know, as he's going through what he's going through? Or how I kind of read it in the books is there's that support, but there's also just a lot of sadness and frustration. And I think that's where some fans kind of get turned off their character sometimes, but I know, how would you like to see Madeline play within the realm of what she can bring to it? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and for me, at least uh, I would like to, I want to see uh, probably to carry it really similar to the books, but I think I've said this before. I would not mind them giving her a little bit more age and experience to all of them. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't want this to feel like a CW show. I'll be honest. Like, I don't want older actors that we clearly know are older playing younger selves that none of us believe, right? Like, I don't need to see one of those 25-year-old high school shows that we all watch yeah. where, where you're like, this is right. ridiculous. And so I wouldn't actually mind them, um, you know, bending that arc a bit more um, uh, to an, a little bit older. That doesn't mean that she's totally, you know, that she's that much different. That's what I just hope. I, is there anything, Lee, that at least comes to you where you think – this actually might be a good way for them to change this character a little bit, or do you want to see them really hold to exactly how the books turn out? Well, I mean, it's inevitable that there are going to be some things that change. They're going to have to compress storylines. They're going to have to do a little bit of juggling. There's not, there's not going to be any way that this is going to be a one-to-one -one transition from book to screen. I mean, that's just not possible. So I hope that they focus on the correct things to, to if they do have to do selective cutting or editing, that they do pick the correct things, which is an incredibly difficult task that I, <laughs> that I do not envy them in the slightest. But as far as the, you know, you, uh, you mentioned the, the trust thing specifically, and I did say earlier that that was one of the reasons why a lot of people didn't like Egwene because she mm -hmm. stopped trusting Rand and everybody's like, just trust him, he's the hero. And I was, my thing is though, is that yes, it's very frustrating. I was frustrated too, but it's not, it, it is not only not unreasonable, it's 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 like what almost any rational person would do when you see even someone who's an old childhood friend who's literally seeming to like lose his mind in front of mm. you. And, right. uh, and so, I mean, like, yeah, it would be great if she was just like, yes, I trust you to the ends of the earth and <laughs> you know, no, no problem. But realistically, no, you'd be like, oh, okay, wow, I don't know. So... I I feel like the thing that made her people kind of dislike her is also one of the things that made her the most realistic as a character. And I don't think that they right. should use that. I think that they, they need to go with that. They need to not be afraid to make some of their characters at least temporarily unlikable. I mean, yep. you know, like... Yeah. Look at Matt. I mean, if he go, if they go with you know how he was, I'm gonna hate him for the first two seasons. <laughs> right. And later on, he's gonna be awesome. So, like, I don't want them to kind of soft pedal anything. In fact, they yeah. As far as TV goes, TV is more visceral than than books as a general rule. Like you know the visual, right. impact, the audio impact, everything. They 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 might even need to lean into it harder. As yeah. I wonder if. That's I wonder if, I mean, because in the book, you sympathize with Rand so much because you get so much of his point of view right. from Eye of the World. But when you don't have that necessarily, you're on the outside looking in. I wonder if it's not necessarily going to make 
Egwene or anyone else, you know, somewhat unlikable just because they don't trust Rand when he's doing, you know, things that are, seem irrational or what have you. Yeah, yeah I, lo I love that idea, which is that we tend to maybe have an opinion about certain characters because of the point of view version of this that we get. And we might not immediately have that. I mean, maybe as fans who have read all the books and we already have embedded right. beliefs about it, but other viewers, I think, coming at this new right. won't necessarily feel the same way. So, yeah, I, I love it. Great, great question, Chad. Uh, thank you so much for, I appreciate you being in chat. Making yeah, thank you show. guys. Yeah. Really appreciate all of you. It's awesome. Uh, I really appreciate it. And hopefully we'll see you again on uh, next Watt Wednesday. Yeah, definitely. Hey, see you, man. Good night. So uh, sorry we lost Mary here. Uh, yeah, she had to step sorry, away. Uh, her connection wasn't good enough, so she just jumped into chat. So yeah, thank you very much, Mary, for being with us. We have one last caller here, and then we will kind of uh, tie it up together here, Lee, and, and say goodnight from the end. Our last caller tonight. Hey, Art, welcome to the Dusty Wheel. How are you doing tonight? Hey, guys. Good evening. Um, I'll, just, I'll just go straight into it. Hi, guys. Um, yeah, I mean, the revelation that um, we have an actress who's uh, of Aboriginal descent uh, re really strikes a chord with me. Like, um, if you think about it, I I've always felt that Egwene, probably more than any of the other uh, Eamon's Fielders, is probably the most eager to be a hero, if you know what I mean. Interesting. She takes her journey, journey, and like almost everybody, you'll you'll hear it through rereads all the time. Like you know, is whining or, <laughs> or is reluctant to to fill a role. You know, winking at you, Land uh, Rand. Um, I it the idea popped in my mind that like uh, her casting as an Aboriginal person and whose people may have had their, you know, their past uh, subverted. Um, for whatever reason, by conflict or colonialization, it, it might weigh upon the character. But I also think that, like, it kind of pushes her arc in such a way that you know she she might be more willing to be out there, maybe to prove something or just just to kind of recapture her people's uh, you know distant past of, of greatness and as warriors, and which always like struck me as why she connected with the Aiel so much and um because also they're kind of like a remnant of themselves too and maybe they don't know it but you know just some thoughts out there like uh, how how do you guys uh feel like um her character being so distinct in that way that i, I think there was a m moment where she probably felt um like she needed to go on this journey, you know, more so than the others. So it feels like the rest of them were forced to go on it in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. But Egwene, on the other hand, feels like she voluntarily goes on it, right? Yeah, do you think that, this, do you think that, you know, from just what Art just said, do you think there's an aspect where she actually will knock it out of the park because she does feel driven? Uh, you know, Egwene does seem driven to kind of prove herself um, that she deserves this and that she's capable of doing it. she can do it and almost like she's doing this for a some other reason that's pushing her so i i like that you brought up menethrin basically and you're tying that a little bit to some of maybe the emphasis that madeline might bring in from her background uh, lee does that strike you as maybe a, a reason to believe that she will pull this off really well i i think that the negotiating the kind of um uh racial undertones of the entire series is going to be extremely interesting considering the, the their casting choices um i'm i'm really curious to see what they end up doing there like if they, are they going to lean into that or are they just kind of kind of you know play it off or whatever but you know mm -hmm. is definitely like a you know the remnants of an ancient culture that kind of got smashed and destroyed and uh and so the parallels there are pretty obvious when you think about it and um and if you i again i don't know how overt they're going to make it like i don't know how much how hard they're going to lean into it but i think madeline herself with the things the roles that she's chosen so far and the and the and the the roles in her life that she's taken on so far i think that it would be very surprising if she didn't personally lean into that um you know, in, in terms of creating the character and making the character, you know, come off, the, come off the page, so to speak. 
So, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm very interested to see. They, they're, they've clearly got a very different vision for what they're doing uh, with Eamon's field in particular, and I would presume Wheel of Time in general. Um, I think it's going to be one that some of the fans are going to not appreciate. Um, but I think that, I think that, I think that if they, if they, they lean into it in the right way and they do, and they do it, then it could be pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah. Thank you. That's, that's, a, that's yeah, that's great. Well put. Um, and Art, Hey, thank you very much for holding online there. And I, I loved this kind of, uh, focus that you brought up again. Uh, I think this is like uh, it, for each one of these characters and the cast member or the you know, individual they've chosen for them. I think you can kind of pull, you know, these uh, layers of the onion as we go down and kind of dig deeper into them. And that's what's the, going to be the fun part is actually getting them in front of the camera and seeing how it happens and seeing what they actually do excel at and where they might need to kind of stretch. To me, it's one of those where I'm almost glad that season two is going to hit the Sean Chan because I want her to find comfort. Like I want her to build Egwene, right? I want her to get comfortable in this role before she hits such a key moment of that character's transformation. So... Hey, Art, uh, once again, thank you for calling in. As always, appreciate you in chat there. And, uh, yeah, have a good evening, okay? Good night. Talk to you later. Yep, bye-bye. Bye. Thank you to all of our callers and Mary. Uh, any last thoughts uh, here from a where you think that maybe things that we haven't covered yet, where you think that Madeline will excel in becoming a Gwen, and where you think there might be a concern or a challenge that you haven't brought up? She's um, Madeline does serious very well. And uh, that's the thing about Egwene, she's very serious. Even when she's, you know, she's not, she's not the jokester. She's not, she's not like, you know, lighthearted at all. She's very, burnt. Yeah. And that is something that, you know, Madeline's good at. Um, she, she, you know, you know, she, like I said, it's the ooh, ooh girl. She's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, this is a meme. This is a meme. The ooh, ooh girl needs to be out there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really true though and 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 um and she's definitely going to bring that i think that her challenge is going to be um she's not going to be the bit role she's not going to be the secondary support player i mean like i say technically all of them are support players after ran but really in practice it doesn't end up working like that she's going to have to be the protagonist of her own yeah. arc she's going to have to carry it and uh and that's going to be i think the real challenge for her um and but again a lot of that comes down to directing and and writing and she's already got like you know an art obviously biased opinion a really great <laughs> you know and and so i think that if she gets the material and she runs with it she can really make a she can really make a, a great impact um you know so we'll see i'm very interested to see what happens yeah i i I think you bring, you bring up the, a good point there, which is, you know, in the end, can she uh, basically take this kind of more serious role, which I think, like you said, she's really good at and really just own Egwene in that way. Like not, and I hope that they haven't, and that's where I hope from a writing standpoint, that they haven't changed that aspect. Like we don't need really funny, hilarious Egwene. Like, that's, <laughs> like when people talked about Brandon writing Matt, you know, I always thought that uh, Brandon wrote different side of Matt but not the one that Robert Jordan showed us. <laughs> no yeah. one ever tells really awesomely funny jokes all the time. You know, no one ever is that on. And so yeah. I always felt like I got a little matrim a little bit off. <laughs> he was a little bit off. But in that same way, I, you know, you can, however they write these characters is going to define for viewers who Egwene is to them and not in the book. So yeah. it, I'm sure it's tempting to try to add something in or, or, or change that arc a bit. Uh, and I, I see people in chat all the time say like, don't change anything. Things well, are going to change, but I, I kind of wonder if they're going to leave that idea the same. Well, that's the thing. I mean, like the casting alone shows that Rafe and the rest of the, of the writers are, they're not being afraid to go their own way, you know? So I, you know, I don't honestly know like how, right. <laughs> how I, I, this could go off in a completely different direction. Um, the thing that I like to do, though, about stories like these, like I did the same thing when uh, watching the Game of Thrones show, which is that you want to look at it as someone who's read the books, but you also want to kind of try to approach it as some like a less pretend. I never read the books. I have no idea who these people are. I don't know, you know, Jack about any of this happening. Like in that case, 
does it make sense to me? Does it work for me? Does it go forward? And that's, that's actually the, I mean, honestly, that's the important part because yes, we're the, we're the fans of the books and everything like that. But what we all hope this does is introduce these characters to a much wider audience. That will enjoy uh, it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> will enjoy and, it. And will enjoy it and then go and buy the books. Yeah, you know? no, and then, totally. So, yeah. So I'm, I, I honestly don't know where they're going to go with it. I, I, there's certain things that I hope that they retain, but like, I'm just, I'm, I'm willing to kind of, you know, yeah. go with it and see where yeah, it's going. Yeah, see, see how it's going. I mean, yeah. I saw this in chat, by the way. Hopefully you've enjoyed this enough to like the video before you leave as I finish up with my last point here. And if, if you're new to the Dusty Wheel and you enjoy this kind of discussion, deep dive from, a, you know, this live weekly show, please subscribe. It kind of, uh, it makes us wake up in the morning and say, you know, what else should we do when it comes to uh, live Wheel of Time shows? We'd love to have you as a subscriber. But yeah, please do like the video so fans find this. And my last point before I let us go, uh, and, and to Madeline, I want to say this. Welcome to fandom. Um, we wish you the best of luck. We recognize this character is going to be a challenge. It's not easy. She has an amazing arc. Definitely so much change comes. Uh, so many interesting things happen to this character. So we do, I think, as fandom... We want it to be like, we want to love uh, the Egwene or, you know, be divisive and, and not for all the right reasons because it's Egwene. Uh, so we wish you the best of luck. We, we can't wait to see you in this role. And I'll leave you with one last challenge for me. Uh, that I, One concern I think I have is uh, I, don't, I, I don't like um, Egwene being too na naive, right? I, th I feel like Madeline, like you said, it handles that serious, smart, talented really well. Um, and less so kind of like I'm naive and I hope they do not embed in Egwene being naive as much. I mean, certainly she's naive in the sense of not having experience out there um, as far as worldly experience. And she's naive because she doesn't know the ways of the White Tower. Those things are fine. I just don't want to see a naive person in general. I want to see this driven individual that is, is serious and can laugh and dance and, and likes to engage with new cultures and new things and wants to go find things. I, I really hope they embed in that piece because to me, my concern would be that I just don't think that comes across as well in Madeline's work when the, the character is not supposed to know these things or be competent as much so in situ situations. So, uh, yeah, that's my one concern. I don't think they're going to. I think... Uh, they're gonna they're gonna kill it. That's what I keep on telling myself, right? From a fandom perspective. So, um, yeah, I, I love this choice that they made of Madeline Madden. Uh, having watched some of these things, I, I think her background and just who she is as a person is going to come out in this character. I think this is one of those perfect. She's a lot like Egwene situations, so I think she's gonna just bring it. Um, so, yeah, I, that's that's where my hope lies. Lee, thank you so much for being with me. This is so much fun. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. It was fun. Absolutely. We will do this again. Uh, this will not be the last time we break down some characters or talk about actors or do all the things we do here at the Dusty Wheel. So for those of you that are still here, uh, you can jump into Discord for our after show if you want to keep on talking about Egwene and Madeline Madden and discuss it with us. I'll try to jump in there also and, and chat up with you. You can find the link to that in the description. If you want to Follow some of the articles or some of the videos we used tonight to start with the show. Those are in the description, too. You can read those. Madeline's done a lot of interviews, really interesting things. I, just those four quotes I posted were, you know, really fun to learn about her. So I, I re highly recommend it. So, yeah, we'll see you here at the Dusty Wheel, hopefully in the after show. And good night. And as we say around here, smash to black. If you want news, Aru.